Hey guys, so yesterday someone commented on my video that I made about this guitar, the Eastman Juliet, saying typical buyer's remorse. Okay, maybe maybe you're right, okay? Maybe you're right. And I have said before on, that, on the comments of that video that my views on the guitar have changed over time. Right, so quick, quick crap, I bought this guitar about a year ago, so it's been over a year that I've had it, and in the beginning I really liked it, and then there was a period that I sold the two other Eastmans because I felt like it was sort of redundant to have the three of them and I also needed money. You know, the same thing that we all go through at some point or another, unless you are actually a balanced person. And uh, at the moment that I had made that video, I felt like there was a few quality imperfections here and there. There were some design choices that I didn't quite enjoy. And all in all, maybe this was a pass at 1250. But the world has moved on, inflation has progressed, this guitar continues to be available for between 1250 and 1300 pounds, and I have matured, and I have learned, and I have considered, and I have been unable to sell it, so I've had to live with it. Just for a bit of context, at the moment this is my most expensive guitar, so I don't have expensive guitars at all for terms of comparison. I have begun doing DIY kits and stuff like that, so I think I understand a bit more what goes into building a guitar and the finishing and, and all that, and how hard it is actually to get a, a good quality product that it's just not covered in very thick amounts of filler and primer and, and all those sorts of things. So, uh, I've come to appreciate this guitar more than I did. Uh, so a few things that I think are cool, for example, the headstock has this design that shows the white underneath and then it has the black with a bit of thing. This is cool. It's harder to make than just paint it black or just have uh, a matching headstock. It's, it, there's work in this, which is just not, oh, it's a CMC. Yes, but the CMC doesn't send it to the fine detail that it, that it does have. And then there is different painting times because you have to paint, wait, and then do the other thing. Even the logo and everything, it's really cool. The vintage style tuners that allow you to put the string through the top. It's still my favorite, I think, um, even more than locking tuners because, you know, you just go, you cut it, you put it in, you go, we wrap it, it, it works well. It's our quality uh, tuners, quality hardware through and through. It's all nickel as well, which I hadn't realized that wasn't chrome, it's, it's nickel. So it looks better. It has that sort of yellowish tone to it. Uh, I brushed, brushed. Uh, I took a bit of scotch bright sandpaper, like a polishing pad, and went on the pickup. So now it has this brush, brush steel, which I quite like now. Uh, I've, these knobs are not my favorite. They feel a bit strange, but they work really well. Um, the pickups, I've managed to balance them in terms of height, so they have sort of similar volume meaning that the bridge pickup is really close to the strings here and this one is almost sunk into the pickup ring. I still think that the pickup ring could be thinner, there exist ones, but this is the American spec pickup rings. Uh, I think it's uh, Goto hardware, even the screws are Goto, hard, uh, Goto screws, so if you lose one of them, it's a bit of headache, an headache to get another one. Um, and then there is the, the fact that it's a really light guitar, I haven't weighed it, but I think it's like three kilograms, something like that. It's really light. Uh, the, it's really comfortable to play. The nut width and the nut material and everything make it uh, really enjoyable to play. I often come back to it and I think this is a really nice guitar. It's a shame that I'm, that I'm selling it or putting it up for sale or anything like that. I'm not, I took it out of the market because I felt that there was no point to, to put it up for sale. Uh, even the, the little feature here of the raised uh, middle, which I complain about the material, painting material being more on one side than the other. At the end of the day, that doesn't really matter. Uh, and it is a, a cool distinctive feature. I do think that the design could be better implemented, but then again, Antonio, not Antonio, something Ambrosio, Otto Ambrosio came with the American series, which I find really ugly. People disagree, but I find them really ugly, like way worse than this, at least this has this uh, design feature here to, to make it different. I tried putting a less charm on it, a chrome one, but although visually made it more striking, uh, the tuning stability suffered, so I went back to putting the, the stop tail bridge. They've let me have the, the tremolo for a little bit. 
Uh, I still don't think that this system, like the Telecaster Freeway up and down, works really well like this, but once you get used to it, you sort of have to do something with your hand to change. To be honest, the times that I've played it live, I haven't changed pickups that much. I just go on the bridge pickup and play. Sound-wise, after comparing to different pickups, I do enjoy some more Duncan EQ that they put on. I have the, I'm pointing, I'm looking at the share gold that has the um, pearly gates on the bridge and the a P90 on the neck, uh, which is a great combination. Again, another great guitar, I'll just show you briefly, that uh, doesn't get the respect that it deserves. Although I've always uh, loved this guitar, especially because you can get it used for 500 pounds or, or even less. Uh, even the the provoca the masquerader, the shell girl masquerader, such great guitars, such banging deals out there, but that's for another time. But again, heavier, although it is similar materials. Um, and then there's the thing that I I really I've made a video a while back talking about how I wanted the Les Paul because it has that striking look uh, that is associated with so many other players, with so many songs, and if you're building a collection or if you'd like to have a collection of guitars, the Les Paul is such an iconic symbol in itself. But if I think about it, honestly, anyone can have a Les Paul. Most people will have had a Les Paul at some point, and most people play Les Pauls, uh, or a lot of people play Les Pauls. Who, who has an Eastman Juliet? Like, really, in your area, not many people will have. So if you play these, it's a differentiating factor. Now, if you're playing a cover, if you're playing like Slash <laughs> or Guns N' Roses cover band, obviously you need the Les Paul and not this. But, I don't know. I might still, at some point, get a Fender Strat and a Tele and a, Les, a Gibson Les Paul and, and all that, just because I would like to have that collection. Um, but if I'm being honest with myself again, I have everything that I need here to make those sort of sounds. And... Uh, probably it's easier to do it because with a 25 and a half scale length where everything sits it's much easier to play sitting down as well the offset design contributes to that and like especially in this um looking at it this way not not like this this looks like a melted egg right but like this okay that's why we're going to play it setting up this is how we're going to look even this bulbous form and everything that I talk about, when you're playing, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is the neck shape, it's the fretwork that I have to fix again, so I had reasons to be disappointed with it. Uh, but once it had been sorted, it plays really well. Um, it sits really well, it's loud enough, doesn't have any sort of issues with electronics. Uh, the issues that I had with warranty and uh, defects that I found particularly around here, uh, Eastman was great to deal with, and I don't know. Uh, on the last live stream, I mentioned that Epiphone was going after Eastman market share. I don't mean to say that the new Epiphones will be made to the same quality standard that Eastman is in terms of finishing and components and everything. Maybe they will. I, I haven't tried one. Uh, they do have like cool binding and cool looks and like the ES355. It's basically the Noel Gallagher uh, model as well. So I think it would be really cool to, to play that, particularly because I like Oasis and, and so many other bands. But, but uh, there's still a copy of something else. So we're not getting the, the real deal. You're getting a copy of something else. Uh, the finish is still poly, this is closer to nitro, uh, well, some of them are actually nitro. Um, and um, you're getting the, the end model here. The Eastman Juliet, it's this, all right? There's no imports here because they're already made in China, there's no like, cheaper version at the moment, there's not a more expensive version, there's the special version, which is the thing that still attracts me to Eastman, although people say, oh, the prices have gone, yes, you can. You can buy a Gibson for less than you can buy an Eastman at the moment. It is true. Uh, people keep comparing them to, oh, it's like a custom shop Gibson. I don't know. I've tried. I've played a custom shop Gibson and Kaufman's and, and other, other really good instruments. I like Eastman guitars. And for example, they sent either a case on this one, it had a gig bag, which again has something that I don't like, which is why this handle is right in the middle of the gig bag. And with the weight distribution, it can't hold it here because it tips one way or another. But it has this really nice padded 
uh, backpack style thing. It has a, a big pocket here and uh, it's really protective and it has foam bits in the mid and inside that uh, allow you to have uh, a really secure guitar. For gigs, this is, I prefer this sort of gig bag more than a case. So um, it's like a complete product. You, you buy this guitar and you get a complete product. And now, since the price of everything else has gone up, it's sort of a better deal than it was even last year. Uh, even the used Eastman's SB59s and everything have gone up. And, you know, the SB59 and the T486 and the T64 and the T59, like the semi holes and single cuts and the, the specials and everything, those are copies, one way or another, although they have different designs, of Gibson original designs, right? So you can always think, ah, I have this, but what I really wanted was a Gibson. And I believe, like if it was now, right, I had my first guitar there, and I'm 30 years old, I could get into a finance agreement, I'll probably just go, look, you're a man, you're an adult, you're even playing out sometimes, go get the Fender. Go find the Fender used, the Sienna Burst that I want, that's available at Guitar Guitar, and buy that. And be done with it. And then you can be saying like, oh, I bought an American Strat, or I bought an American Gibson, and I didn't like it, and then I went searching for it. Otherwise, it's always on the back of my mind. Maybe, maybe that was all I needed. Maybe that's all I need. Probably isn't. Probably isn't. Maybe this is like so many other people have said before. It's some sort of disease. And for someone like myself that uh, takes pills for uh, ADHD, <clears throat> maybe I'll always be in this loop of looking for guitars and for looking for things to do and, and stuff. I could be into harder drugs. I don't know. Um, how does it sound? Let's start on the cleaning. pickup is just volume so this is the brightest that it's gonna get to edit and to do a bunch of things. I'm sorry guys, I, I, I really like to, but overdriven. On the neck. So here. So it sounds really cool. How does it sound comparatively to other things? Um, so you heard it, uh, you heard it, right? Compared to the Seymour Duncan um, here, which is the Prodicates, right? That's what I said. The other one has a different characteristic to it. For example, if it was, oh, which one do I prefer? I've preferred this one for a while. Uh, but that one also sounds good. Uh, and that's the beauty of having different guitars, right? It's, it's having different things sound differently. So there was that about the Eastman Juliet. Uh, I think it's a good guitar. Uh, if you're looking for something, don't get it to replace it. Like if you're looking for a tele, don't get it because it has a bright humbucker sound. If you're looking for a Les Paul, don't get it because it's a guitar that, like, try it, think about it, hear the reviews. The good things about it, again, playability, ergonomics, sound, uh, unique looks. 
especially like your original artist and you don't want to be held in comparison to other people and there's other guitars like that again the Shergold, the Yamaha Revstar, the the Reverence there's there, there are brands out there that are unique like that and you can sort of carve your own way by by using those guitars because there's no comparison to be made with Les Paul players or 335 or Ibanez metal RGs or something like that although Ibanez has cool guitars I, I really like the S series for example so um, it is what it is it is an expensive guitar to me at least it is uh, can you get something similar for less absolutely you can get an East Coast for example or a Harley Benton or a Faisley or a Jet guitar or something like that right put boot camp uh, humbucker on it, uh, a bare knuckle boot camp true grit and our old guard in this case and you get a very similar sound for sure but that is a whole package with a case, with heritage, with, with everything that Eastman provides, right? Sound wise it's possible to achieve, playability wise probably it's also although that guitar has some unique specs in terms of nut width and neck shape so it's definitely one of those that uh, it needs to be played really um, in order to be able to be appreciated and i've only come to this conclusion after a year of not being able to get rid of it it's like i bought it and now i can't get rid of it so it grew on me over time it wasn't it i was attracted to it initially but then it became maybe this is not really what i want Maybe I need something that sounds a bit more like this, and then I had this, and then it's like... The confusion. We all have this confusion, apparently. Um, I guess if you're, if you're doing covers gigs, get whatever thing you're, you're covering. If it's the SG look that you, look, that you want, go get it. If it's the 335, go get it. If it's a Strat, get it. But um, this is, could be our little secret, the Eastman Juliet. With guitars they're gonna get discontinued one day <laughs> i don't know that, 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 that's the thing as well there's no real value attached to it they if you go to trade them they're like half the price straight away at in a, in a shop which is not the worst thing but it's not the best um they're not easy to move on because again people don't know what they are how they sound how they feel all, all those things so it's one of those guitars that you buy and you're a bit stuck with it um but it is a good guitar. I just wanted to come here and say that after a year of owning it, although I did have, I guess, buyer's remorse uh, because of the circumstances, looking at it objectively as a guitar, as a tool, that is not that much expensive than other imports that are made to a spec to be inferior to the real deal somewhere else, like the Japanese, the Japanese guitars or the American guitars. This is like made to be what it is I think it's worth giving it a go this is what it is cool guitar buy at your own risk be prepared to have a little bit of a shock to the system but it's a safe buy okay everyone thank you so much for watching take care of yourselves and I'll see you all next time bye bye